Hey, what's up, guys? The best P.E.K.K.A. player in the world just made a severe switch up with his Bridge Spam deck. After throwing his P.E.K.K.A. in the trash and putting in wall breakers, he zoomed his way up to rank 3 in the world. The idea is if you can keep up with constant pressure, your opponent will never get a chance to go on offense. And because the Little Prince and Evolved Archers already do so much damage, the P.E.K.K.A. isn't always needed and feels like overkill. Adding in wall breakers elevates the spam status to near 100%. Because as soon as you bait out your opponent's buildings with your wall breakers, you'll be splitting their tower in two with your battle ramp. And the cheaper cycle with wall breakers allows for way more evolved archers. And because they both can be split, they're the perfect fit, allowing you to cycle archers more frequently with your wall breakers. And if there's one thing that's true in this game, more evolutions equals more wins, which without a doubt is the easiest equation to assert dominance. Lots of love to everyone that's supporting the channel with creator code SIRTAG. Yo, this guy finished 725 in the world, AK Syndicate. So, you seem like a sinister sir, a part of a very sinister clan, so... I need to make sure that I'm an absolute villain. We're gonna steal the show here and go in for the wall breakers to hopefully get a blow. Okay, that was decent for us. Definitely blue for him if he's gonna go in for a fireball for a negative two trade into wall breakers. So if we're playing against someone with fireball and a knight, I'm expecting him to probably have either, I don't know, an expo deck or a hog rider deck. Nine times out of 10, it's gonna be expo, but what? Are you serious? <laughs> My man's out here packing Sparky. So I wasn't ready for that. I'm going to go for a zap on the mini P.E.K.K.A. and the Sparky. Maybe we can get an extra shot. We are going to be able to blast the mini P.E.K.K.A. down to the point that I won't have to respond to it. But I am going to go for Archers just to be able to body block and guarantee he doesn't get like a zap or a snowball or something weird. I think we sacrifice the Archers and then we can go in for a Little Prince after that. Click the Little Prince ability, knock back the Goblin Giant, and then poison on the... Oh my gosh. I don't know. If we poison on the minions, do we still get shredded by the Sparky? I think so. Maybe not. Oh, no way! <laughs> that was the best interaction we could have ever manifested in Clash Royale. And I'm proud to say that that poison made sure we didn't take a single hit of damage. Somehow, through the Spear Goblins and the Sparky and the Sparky's support of the minions, he still didn't get a shot. That's awesome. All right, we're going to go in for this, and we'll zap on the Sparky so then the Battle Ram can connect for more damage. It's always nice to get extra value on the Knight. The bad thing about this is I think if I don't start to spam in the other side, what happens is our opponent goes in for a Goblin Giant and wins the game. We're going Wall Breakers because he can't kite them to the other side since they're building targeting. If they didn't target buildings, so it would be a different story. We can also maybe get away with like Archers and then have them split on both sides. Click the ability here. I think we kill the Sparky. Possibly. Nice! Awesome. <laughs> we didn't successfully split our archers either, so that was kind of meme -y. No mini pack and cycle means that I've got to go for a battle ram and take full advantage of the situation. I'm going to zap on the minions, which might seem stupid to you guys. Because you're like, why aren't you going to zap on the Sparky? Well, if we keep our parade of push going through, we know that the evolved knight's going to get brought out. It's going to force out more elixir, and then he might goblin giant directly into evolved archers. At least that's what I was hoping he would do. I guess he's not going to. I'm going to go battle ram here with everything that we have on the left hand side. And I'm pretty confident that the Evolved Knight will get one shot on my tower, but it's not that big of a deal. He's going to have to Fireball again, which is not something he wants to do. Without Fireball and Cycle, how is he expecting to kill these Evolved Archers? Even if you Rage, it doesn't matter. We can go for Wall Breakers, or we can go for a Zap. I think going for Wall Breakers split on both sides is a lot better. As long as one of them just gets hit, then that's fine. Because we get Counter Push with that Wall Breaker too. And then we can go for a Bandit on the other side. I think he has to Fireball on this. There's no way he gets away without Fireball on this. Dude, he's not Fireball, and he's just letting that roll. We could have went for the Little Prince ability there, but it would have gotten simply shredded and put down by the Mini P.E.K.K.A. He's not going to have anything that's scary. We can just spam everything we want on the right-hand side. We got the Rail Ghost on the left because he has to defend that. Now he has to spend the Elixir on both sides. Rail Ghost is going to take his tower. Never mind, the Wall Breaker's got it. <laughs> Dude, I thought we were going to win on the left, but our Bridge Spam on the right rushed us to victory faster than I could have ever anticipated. This speedy bridge spam strategy is so chaotic that it's hard to keep up with even if you're the person playing it. After slamming into Sparky, we've pushed up to 2,600 in the world. Hey, this guy's finished 581 in the world. So a top 600 finisher. I'm gonna go in for archers in the back and see what he's up to. It's nice to cycle our archers with confidence because we do have an anti-air response if he has balloon. Still have our little prince in our hand. And he's gonna rage me. So I think it might be another Sparky player. We played against one earlier and we're gonna play against another one again. Oh, man. Or it could be Goblin Giant, actually. Oh, it's going to be Goblin Giant. But could it be with Sparky or is it going to be with Recruits? I guess we'll have to wait and see. We're going to sacrifice the Archer and we're going to go for the Little Prince ability. Knock back that Goblin Giant. And please don't let my Guardian get hit twice by that Mini P.E.K.K.A. All right, we're okay. 
We also know that for a fact that our opponent is not going to be running the deck that we were super scared of. Let me run a little bit of a different version. I'm going to zap so our Little Prince does survive and kills the rest of those archers. What do we do? Let's go wall breakers. He'll probably go goblins. Let's try to split our archers and finish off the goblins, maybe. Okay, that did not work at all. But we catch minions. Wait. Wait. This is okay if the bandit goes back on the Dark Prince. And it will. Please? Nice. Okay, I was looking at that for a second. I was like, I think I messed it up. <laughs> but it was in the best position possible. The lane that bandit dash, so then the minions weren't able to lock onto it. It was risky, and I'm not going to say it was skillful because it wasn't. I got lucky that it went back. But we were bouncing back with some damage to the left-hand side, and now we've got Battle Ram, we got Zap, and we got Little Prince. I think it's going to be in our best interest to go for Little Prince, Zap, and use that on defense. I don't think that... Uh, actually, let's go Wall Breakers. Wall Breakers is the wave. Sacrifice one of them. The other one will soak up the rest of the Sparky Shot, and it will give us damage on the Tower too. Let's go! That's what I'm talking about. Okay, I bet you he decides to go in for a mini packa. So let's go and make a prediction with the little prince ability. And do we knock it away? Yes, sir. Look at those outplays. You're top 500 in the world, but we're living rent-free in your brain, bro. Okay, unfortunately, the evil archers are definitely dead, but we're okay with that. We can go for a bandit on the right-hand side, bait out even more elixir. Going for wall breakers because we know he doesn't want to defend against the bandit. We're going to force a response eventually. Okay, we get a fireball from him. Ah. It's okay. It's fine. It's it's decent. Let's go for dual lane pressure. He's not going to go for a Sparky. He doesn't have enough Elixir, so we're going to go for a Ghost, and we're going to go Battle Ram at the same time. We're baiting out the Mini Packet and the Evolved Archers, which is not something he wanted to cycle. So we can go for Archers here. We know he doesn't have Fireball in Cycle, so he can't kill our Little Prince. Let's go click the Little Prince ability. Maybe we can shut this down. Oh, from the depths of despair, the Guardian doesn't care. It somehow finds a way to bounce on through. Let's go wall breakers in the right just to keep up the fight and make sure that he has to spend elixir. We know the bandit is going to force out a response too, so let's see what we can make happen here. I think it's better for me to eat the entire Dark Prince. Going for a battle rim. Since we have Zap, he might forget that we have Zap. There's a chance he might forget that we have Zap. If he goes Sparky, he automatically loses the game. I'm not going to get it. Oh, jeez. I spent so much elixir there and I got nothing. Also, I think that he's going to go in for a Goblin Giant, which is not ideal. Let's go in for wall breakers, pull back the mini pack. Oh. Wait, we didn't even need to pull back the mini Pekka. We can zap on the Sparky. We can get a poison down. One of those wall breakers connects. We can bounce back to Dark Prince. We can go for Evolved Archers again. He might be able to cycle back to another zap before he's ready. He thinks that the Sparky's going to completely clean up, yet it's going to get shut down by the zap. Yo, wall breakers connect, blast the Sparky in the tower, and we walk away with the win. A little bit sketchy. I took a lot of damage to the right-hand side, but pounding the top 500 player down with predictions is one of the best feelings in the game. Even with the nerf to Goblin Giant, these Sparky players will never stop playing their decks. So we have to take matters into our own hands and make them stop ourselves. And now we're at top 2,400 in the world. So this guy's got the Little Prince banner. He's showing his sword, and he's ready to have some fun, apparently. So I'm gonna go for my wall breakers and see if we can get some blasts on his tower. At least that'd be fun for me, maybe not for him. He's gonna go for a log and he's also gonna have goblins, so it's probably gonna be a fast cycle deck with Hog Rider or maybe a minor poison deck. When the goblins are out of cycle, that's our best opportunity to go for the bandit. Because goblins and skeletons will distract the bandit and give him positive elixir trades. We got a knight out of him, that's not great. Maybe the royal ghost is able to finish it off to the point that I won't have to respond to it so I can cycle archers in the back. We're both at 10 elixir, but he's got a hog rider, and our best answer to that is gonna be clicking the little prince ability with the archer. And if we get the Little Prince down fast enough, we don't take any Hog Rider Hammer hits. However, in that particular position, we will take a Hog Rider hit every time. Okay, so we can kill the Ice Spirit. We are able to finish off the Firecracker for a negative one trade, but also damage down the tower with our Poison damage. Overall, not awful. If we go in for Wall Breakers, they're just going to get Goblins, so it wouldn't make sense for us to do that usually. Or Logged or Ice Spirited, plus like Cannon possibly. I guess splitting the Wall Breakers is ideal. I think that's what we're going to go for most of the time. If we get a Tesla, that's a plus two trade. And not having the Tesla in cycle means that we can test him with our Battle Ram. So that's the real reason that Pekka was removed. So you can go and bait out your opponent's buildings with the Wall Breakers. Or just play way more aggressive with the deck and apply more pressure against these annoying control decks that seemingly have a defense for everything. I'm going to go for a Royal Ghost here since he just used his Knight. It's going to be hard for him to defend with Goblins. I hope that the Ghost is actually able to hit the Goblins. Okay. He got back to another Tesla. Dang. You know what? We can go Wall Breakers here to activate King Tower against the Firecracker. And then after that, I think that the Firecracker is going to die to the Bandit. So overall, not an awful position for us, but it could have been slightly better. I hope he doesn't Hog Rider. Well, I guess if he Hog Riders, he doesn't have Firecracker in cycle. These Archers should be able to finish everything off. Splitting Archers, not necessarily the best if you don't have enough Elixir to support them. But I wanted to be preemptive. I didn't want to give him the availability of going in for a Hog Rider into me. 
So I can go for a little Prince and then go click the ability. As you guys already know, we are spamming that ability like a madman, knocking back the Hog Rider and pushing it as far back as possible. It has to be in alignment with the Hog if you want to be able to counter it. And that was a clean counter. We take those. I'm going to battle him in the back right. And what do we do? Hmm, I guess we can go Wall Breakers. There's a, there's a chance that this Battle Ram does connect to that Tesla. It would be really nice for us. I don't know if it's going to happen, but one can pray. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Go invisible? Nope, you didn't go invisible. That's not good. <laughs> this is actually awful. Dude, that Firecracker Evolution is going to ruin my day entirely. We've got two ghosts on the field, though, so maybe we can do something with that. We're straight up just poison. It ruins our momentum poisoning, but I want to be able to get some semblance of damage. And if the Firecracker's alive, we're not going to be able to accomplish that. He did use his Goblin, so let's go Wallbreakers in the right. Maybe we can bait out a Tesla. I don't think that's going to happen anymore. Are we going for a Bandit as well? Both Wallbreakers connect. What the heck? No way that worked. Okay, well, we didn't get as much damage as we needed, though. <laughs> oh, jeez. Please, 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 please. Oh, wait, that, that did a lot. It killed the Firecracker, so we can go Battle Ram here. We can go Wallbreakers and maybe just go for Evo Archers and try to just break through. Since we have the Evolution, this is our one opportunity gonna earthquake and log on the archers so we're gonna try to spam everything off on the right let's go for a little prince the bandit's gonna lock on the tower no way if we zap and we kill those goblins maybe we can go in for a little prince ability and then fumble our way through with wall breakers is there a chance that the wall breakers connect we have the guardian tanking there is a legitimate shot we just need one wall breaker hit one wall breaker hit is it no he's gonna poison counter with the log <sighs> Oh, dang it. So as you guys can see, if you get a mismatch into someone that is running an Evolved Firecracker with Hog Rider, since you don't have any buildings, it is a bad matchup. But it's possible to win. We were inches away from destroying his tower, and unfortunately, we didn't have the power to counter the log. Still pretty fun stuff. We'll bounce on the next one and bounce back there. Yo, this guy finished 95 in the world. Oh my gosh. You know what? After a loss, we are destined to bounce back. It's time to revolutionize the game with a counter to Hog Rider when we didn't have it last time. You know what, Clash Rail? I'm built for this. I'm born for this. We don't make mistakes twice. I actually don't know if I made a mistake last time. Probably did make some misplays along the way. But this is such a tough matchup, so we are really going to test our skill and see if we can pull it out today. I know that I want to activate King Tower, so to get that King Tower activated, I'll probably have to go Wall Breakers. I'm going to do that instead of the Battle Ram. It's just going to be more cost effective. We'll see if our opponent wants to do anything. He's just going to let the Wall Breakers do their thing and he's not going to be able to stop them. So I wish I dropped them slightly earlier. They would have ran away from the Firecracker shot and they would have been able to still preserve their HP and force out extra Elixir after. Anyway, we've got a Little Prince, we've got a Bandit, and we also end up having a Guardian tanking for everything. If I poison on the Firecracker, it will end up dying inside the poison, so that's worth it. I don't know if our opponent's going to do anything else, though. Yeah, it should walk back up into the poison. We're fine. Uh, he's going to Hog Rider soon. A little bit uncomfortable for us since we don't have the evil archers. I guess I'm going to go in for archers as soon as possible with the ghost, and I'm going to like double drop them on a Hog Rider. But it's not a really good counter. It's going to be spending six elixir. The Hog Rider should still get a shot on the tower, too. Even though we drop our ghost and archers as fast as possible. Still not enough. And he's going to go in for a Firecracker afterwards. So, as you can see, this matchup is difficult. It is... Likely the hardest matchup for our deck. I, I can't think of anything that's more scary for me than this. So I'm going to get a little Prince down. I think we're going to be able to dash on that Firecracker, so that's good. We're going to go click the ability. Maybe we can go and hit some Goblins if we're lucky. Nah, he's going to drop his Goblins off at the side. He's too good for that. But we could go for our Wall Breakers right now. Please just let the Wall Breakers connect. I guess if they kill a Tesla, the Firecracker isn't going to be able to finish off the little Prince. Dude, no way! We're finding damage! Let's go! He wasn't ready. All right. We're going to go in for our archers as fast as we can so we can shred the knight so he can't go for a hog rider. And then we can go in for a royal ghost in front of the battle ram. And if he tries to log, and he probably will, we might be able to apply pressure with the bandit and the archer on the left-hand side. I don't know if this is insanely smart, but this is what we have to do. We're going to have the archer and we have the bandit left, and we have the ghost and the barbs on the right. Oh, man. I, I think this is super close stuff. Dude, no way. All I have to do is defend the right-hand side, and then I can start applying pressure on the left and force out Elixir on both sides simultaneously. So we're going to go and click the ability of the Little Prince, knock back the Hogger to take no damage, try to go in for a Battle Ram with a Royal Ghost on the left, and then also bombard him with Wall Breakers. Because if one of these things connect, the Battle Ram or the Wall Breakers, I will win the match. I just need one of them. Anything out here. Wall Breaker dies. Royal Ghost is still alive. We could poison, but I think that the Little Prince on the right will win us the game if we poison and zap. Please! That's going to be enough. The timer is ticking, and we walk away with a win against a top 100 player in a matchup that we just lost. 
The bounce back is real. It feels so good getting that redemption. And that Hog Rider Firecracker player that we just beat was one of the best players in the world too, finishing at 390 in the world at over 3,100 medals. I think the first match was more of a training arc to prepare us for this match because I don't think there was any shot I would have won. The practice was necessary to crush a player of this caliber. And after hammering Hog Rider, we've worked our way up to 1,300 in the world. It's time to solidify the day on a W. The guy's going to go and cycle his... Ooh, Zappy's in the back. I kind of forgot what the name of the card was because I haven't seen them in a while. You always see Archers, Little Prince, also sometimes even Dark Goblin with fast cycle decks, but rarely do I ever match into someone with Zappy's. Sometimes it'll be like Zappy's Graveyard or Zappy's Royal Giant from what I remember, but I'm really having to like dig off the cobwebs in my brain to ever recollect this type of card combination. So I could poison on this in the later stages of the match, but I'm just going to let the Bandit go into the Skeletons. Sorry, Bandit. You don't deserve our health. You don't deserve our poison. You don't deserve all the damage that I would have to take if I did that. So I'm going to go for archers here. And yeah, it's looking like an RG deck for sure. I think I have to go and pop the little prince ability. So then the fisherman doesn't yoink our guardian or yoink our little prince uh, too early. Yeah, I think we're fine. Even if he clicks the skeleton king ability, we should be able to zap on everything. That's a lot of skeletons coming at me though. <laughs> I think that the tombstone added to his offense, which is not something that you would typically see. It's purely meant to be a defensive card but when you have a whole horde of skeletons coming at me they just got mixed in all right uh, i'm gonna go bandit and he cycled log so i wonder if i can go for a battle ram here on the right and then after we bait out the tombstone and kill it with the battle ram because i think the battle ram survives just long enough to bash into the tombstone oh the bandit did interesting you can also cycle the evolved archers and i think that might be better yeah let's go for royal ghost since it has splash damage and then go for our evolved archers he's likely gonna drop a spell on this I don't want him to, but I think he will. I don't I don't think they're going to survive much longer. Oh, he missed one. No way. That's huge. And he doesn't have that much elixir after he missed it. So we can go and split our wall breakers, go in for a bandit in the right, and then maybe even go for a battle ram if we're feeling frisky. Okay. So that's going to get like one shot on the tower because it fires faster than the tower. Also, since he doesn't end up having tombstone in cycle because he wasted it, I'm immediately going to bombard him with a battle ram. We're going to zap so he messes up the fisherman. Doesn't get the pull. And he is going to go pull a gigantic amount of damage. Let's go, baby. We vibe with that. We roll with that. I'm going to go Archers as well. We can go in for a Royal Giant counter with our Little Prince. I'm going to go Royal Ghost when he goes in for the Royal Giant. We're just going to be saving our Little Prince for that. Otherwise, I think it's going to be better for us to just limit the Elixir that we spend. We're going to be an extreme cheapskate out here. That's how we have to play. I'm expecting him to go Tombstone, so we're going to preemptively poison it. We're going to go for Archers. Never poisoning on top of things that don't matter. Like those, we rather just cycle more Archers. We rather get a better trade over here. Also, the Zap finishes off the Mother Witch. Less piggies for you, bro. All right. Are you going to Royal Giant? Or are you going to just continuously have that patience knowing that you can't? Oh, he's going to do it. Here we go. So the Royal Ghost gets pulled. We can go for a Bandit so we can make sure that the Royal Giant is just going to get knocked back and get nothing. Oh, he Fireballed. This is awesome. Yeah, when they get annoyed and they see the Little Prince doing its thing, they'll Fireball the Little Prince eventually. And then when they do, your Evolved Archers will stay alive. He used his Log too. Jeez, dude. You have nothing for the right. You're dead. Unless, oh, Evolved Archers didn't do enough because he had Skeleton King. Dang, that thing is thick. Oh, yo, 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 chill, 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 chill. I don't like this. This might be the one chance that he has to go and pile on the pressure. I'm going to click the ability. I'm going to knock back the Rail Giant, but it's not in a straight line. So he's going to continuously get damage. This might be a loss for us. I don't know if we can come back. Dude, we're at 600 HP now. Oh my gosh, I got a poison, but he's probably going to go Tombstone up high. It makes sense for him to go for a high tombstone. Is he not going to do it? Yeah, there it is. We're going to have to zap the skeletons immediately. Skeleton King isn't able to finish off the wall breakers. Please. Yo, let's go. We take those. We're going to go bandit on the Skeleton King and use that as a resource. Please just dash on it. No, it didn't. Dang it. We're going to go archers. We can go for another battle ram after we go and kill the zappies. Possibly going for a poison if we're feeling really aggressive. I'm going to go for a royal ghost here. He's going to try to fireball cycle me. All right, let's do this. Let's go in for a... Little Prince, it's going to get pulled. We can click the ability. It's going to maybe distract now. We can go for a zap. Yo, the Little Prince ability went on the tower. No way. Guys, there's a chance. If he doesn't get to the fireball in time, we can go for Evolved Archer to the river. These Evolved Archers might do him dirty. We're going to go for a zap. This is going to be one of the closest games ever, and we barely win. Let's freaking go. I was within fireball range, and we somehow, 
some way got the luckiest win of my life. Maybe there was just a little bit of skill mixed in there, dropping the little prince at the river, knowing that the fisherman would yoink it, giving us a perfect opportunity to get damage, dropping the little prince ability directly on tower. Because if I didn't get the guardian on the tower, there was no way to guard ourselves from that fireball. And because the opponent couldn't handle the heat of our pressure, he tasted defeat. While having more medals is always delicious, pushing us up to 1,200 in the world. Like, subscribe for more daily videos, and have an amazing rest of your day.